Hey everybody. So I showed you my carpentry and electrical tool kit. This is the plumbing kit, as indicated by the P. And here's what's in here. I'm not a plumber, so you know, folks who are plumbers are gonna say you need more stuff than this, but let's start with one of the amazing things in here. This is a heat shield by Odie for uh, protecting framing and subfloor when you're sweating copper pipes in tight spaces. And it saved my bacon on a number of occasions and it just is flexible so you can get it into places that a more rigid material like fiber cement or other things just simply don't work. And uh, oh, it's just a great thing. Requisite uh, plumbing pipe wrenches. Uh, this one uh, is special because I inherited that from my grandfather who was a union plumber. I don't know how old it is, but it's decades old. Uh, and anyone who's used rigid plumbing tools would tell you that this is the perfect thing. Similarly, this is a basin wrench and uh, this is the one to buy. This is also a rigid and this is for tightening the supply line connections on kitchens and bathroom sinks, primarily laundry trays. And uh, it's a one trick pony, but when you have to do that job, it's the only thing that works. I got a self-lighting torch in here and propane, obviously. Uh, for years, I held off buying a self-lighting version. Buy this, don't use a striker. This is so much more convenient. It frees your hand for doing other things while you're uh, running the torch. It's, it's the way to go. These are the best tubing cutters to buy, and you need both. Obviously, the little one is for spaces where the tubing is very close to a framing member or a wall or what have you. Uh, this one is super cool because it's quick adjusting, right? And it's got a big, comfortable handle and a smooth uh, body. You know, if you're, if you're putting a lot of copper tubing in, you're using this tool a lot. And if you have a bad one, your hands are going to be sore and you're just not going to want to work as long as you can with this one. Uh, this is an inside plastic pipe cutter and uh, it doesn't work at all, so save your money. <laughs> got a supply line for a toilet here. I got some closet flange bolts in here. If you're going to be using copper fittings, you definitely want to have some fitting brushes because uh, using emery cloth to clean the oxidation off the fittings is way too slow. So I have uh, obviously a torpedo level in there and then I have some other sizes of fitting brush. And uh, all of these prove useful. Here's a spare torch. Um, this is the one I used before and you know, having to use the striker to light it is just a huge pain. It's not good. I keep a Sharpie marker in here for marking a copper tube and plastic pipe. Keep a four-way, a six-way screwdriver in there for stuff. I've got a flaring tool for copper tubing. I've got another pipe wrench. Um, this is a quick adjusting pipe wrench. It's good in theory, but it's definitely my second favorite. It just doesn't work as well. I got a crescent wrench for compression fittings and uh, flare fittings. This is for bending uh, hard copper supply lines. You put this over and it prevents you from kinking the tubing. They come in a bunch of different sizes, but this is the one for, I believe it's two quarter inch, which is uh, quite common. The other half of the flaring tool. Ah, oh, this is fun. So my wife gave this to me many years ago, and you might ask why I have a compact in here, but it's because I use the mirror to check the backside of copper fittings after I've sweated them to make sure that the solder has made all, its way all the way around. Got a couple other crescent wrenches in there. And um, these are fantastic. These are channel lock uh, slip joint pliers. And uh, they have the rounded jaws, which work better in plumbing applications. They better grip pipes, so that's why I keep these in here. And uh, you need at least that much capacity to be worthwhile. And the length, right? If you're tightening steel pipe, uh, it has to be really tight, so you need the length for the leverage. I got a flat bar in there, because flat bar, uh, a couple slip nuts. This is a 
Another kind of fitting brush for cleaning the outside of three quarter inch tubing. I have um, nitro gloves in here because plumbing work is often disgusting. Uh, so you don't want to be touching the yucky stuff that's in there. You can get yourself hepatitis or some other horrible stuff. Got a couple hose clamps, uh, Teflon tape. I don't like Teflon paste. It makes a mess. I'm, people know me though. I don't like messes. Uh, I find this stuff to be pretty good. It's thicker than the normal stuff you find at the hardware store. Um, I haven't had any trouble with it. This is interesting. These are washers for, uh, slip joints for, uh, metal traps. And this is the one that attaches the tailpiece to the strainer basket on your kitchen sink. And if you've ever wondered why that's leaking, it might be because someone put the wrong washer in there. This is the kind you need. If you have leaky valve stems, uh, this Teflon packing is what you use for resealing the packing nut. Uh, you wrap this around the two or three times and then tighten the nut and it'll stop the valve stem from leaking. It's a thing that people get way more involved than it needs to be. Oftentimes you can just fix it with this thing that costs like two bucks. Plumber's putty for setting uh, stainless steel kitchen sinks and that kind of stuff. Uh, laboratory faucets usually have a layer of this underneath so you can tighten them to the sink top. Got a couple different kinds of uh, solder. I have old school solder that I just have. I don't ever use it and I have this lead free solder uh, which is more modern. And then a little roll of uh, strapping to hold up pipes and stuff. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Nothing revolutionary, but I have found that spending money on good plumbing tools is money well spent.